Namaste, good morning, good evening, good afternoon and all forms of greetings from the bottom of my heart. This is me and in case you're wondering who are you, I am your verbal abilities instructor Susan Pariyar and today I'm connecting here from the online zone of Nepal Academy of Tourism and Hotel Management that would be Natham to conduct a feedback session of Simat's question that was asked in 2022. Okay, so I want you to join me today and let us have a journey over these questions here. So let's have a quick look at uh, the syllabus that's designed by TU. And Simat students should first know what things to study under this. Okay, so before I move on to the feedback session, I would like to quickly discuss about the things that you need to study. Okay, so the things that you need to study are, as you see uh, on the screen, so the first thing is vocabulary. Uh, what things to study under vocabulary? I will uh, discuss that a bit in detail after this slide. So next one, so you have reading comprehension. You normally understand this as passes. You have preposition, okay, those position related words in, on, at, between all those words. Idioms and phrases, oh my God, ukhana and tukha. This is quite a new for many of you. So we also have one of the questions from uh, idioms and phrases in the feedback session, which we'll go on later. Okay, so for now, identify the errors is your next topic. So where you have to locate the grammatical mistake and what is the mistake in there, you have to mark that, okay? And lastly, fill in the blanks, which might have some grammar-related questions so, or sometimes some vocabulary-related questions, especially these homophones, okay? So what are these homophones, homonym, one-word substitution? We'll take a look at that, okay? So, okay, so vocabulary, Synonyms, normally you call it as Pariyavachi Nepali, which is similar in meaning, much like enemy and adversary, they mean the same. Enemy and adversary, they're the same. Next one is bravery and gallantry, they both mean the same. So, antonyms, viparitarthi, opposite meanings, the words are conveying opposite meanings, for example, terrible and soothing. I have a terrible voice, okay, terrible voice, or soothing voice. Okay, so opposite, development and retrogression. Opposite of each other. Next one, homophones. Okay, Shruti Sambinati. You've understood it in uh, Nepali because it's taught in Nepali background uh, since grade four and five, but in English it might be quite new for you. So it's today that you get to learn that Shruti Sambinati is homophones in English. So homophones are those words that have similar pronunciation. Similar pronunciation, but different meanings and spellings. The meanings and spellings are going to be different, much like in principal and principal. Same pronunciation, but this principal here is the headmaster. This principal here is the philosophy, the way you look into life, right? In other words, insight and insight. This is the knowledge, providing knowledge. Insight is to tempt somebody. Uksaunu, what's an uksaunu, right? That's the word. And canon and canon. One canon means uh, the artillery, tof, used by army people. Another canon is the law. Okay? And uh, next one, homonym, anekarti, a single word having multiple meanings. For example, spring. One spring means season. Basantaritu, a lovely season. Next one, uh, next spring means the waterfall. Okay? And another is bear. It's not pronounced as beer, bear. Okay? One of the animal, as lazy as we are. Okay, another bear is to tolerate or endure. One more, another bear also means to produce, much like plants bear fruits. Okay, so it has three meanings. Okay, it can have multiple meanings. Okay, that's why the word multiple. So another is one word substitution, where you'll be given a sentence and you have to find a single word to replace that. For example, what is called to a government of people, by the people and for the people? Okay, that would be democracy as propounded by Abraham Lincoln. So next one is, one who believes in God is called? Yes, and you'll be asked to answer that. Okay, one word substitution. Okay, that'll be taste who believes in God. Okay, so this is a quick look at the vocabulary, and this is something extra for you. Okay, now let us not uh, delay and quickly move on to our topic for today. That would be solving the questions that are asked in 2022. Okay, so this is the first question that was asked in 2022. And you see the first question turned out to be reading comprehension. Okay, so reading comprehension is normally we understand it as passes. 
So you go through the passes, and having gone through the passes, there will be certain questions which you're supposed to answer. And remember one thing, in CMAT, all the questions are MCQs, multiple choice questions, which mean you don't have to write anything down, okay? All you have to do is tick the correct answer, okay? So that is all. So how to approach reading comprehension? So the first suggestions that I would want to offer dear learners is that do not go through the passes more than thrice, okay? So three, three times is the maximum time you go through the passes. Because why, if you ask me, because if you go more than thrice, you know, you may not have time. And you have a time limitation there, right? That will be just 90 minutes. So after you go uh, here, not more than thrice, you will now approach to the questions. So for now, I would want you to quickly pause this video and go through it. Okay? I hope you went through it. Okay, so after uh, going through it, I believe you must have uh, understood what the text means because the text is not that difficult, okay? The text is about a village boys and you know how difficult the village life is. Just like one of the Nepali song goes. What's the Nepali song? I forgot. Did I just forget the Nepali song? Okay. Simali bariya lamasas fereko umero baisoki asi zontula dukhale chweko. So yes, village life is quite a miserable life. Okay, so here our boy Ram wants to escape the village life in order to achieve some fortune which he believes is in the city. Okay, let's see what the first question has to say. On the basis of your understanding of the passage, answer the following question. Okay, that is it. So the first question says, why was Ram shifted to city? One very most important thing about approaching the reading comprehension in CMAD is that you have to find the group of words, okay, just like not just the shift, also the city, the group of these words that are asked in the question, also in the passage. Because the answers, if you take a look at the, the answers, why was Ram shifted to the city? Do we start a new business? More or less it makes sense too. Because in the passage, in the end, he wants to start a new business. To live with his cousin, which isn't wrong actually. So the options here are very identical. It is not like during high schools or school days where the options would be quite different, okay? In CMAT, if not for CMAT, all of these Four questions could be correct. Okay? Now D, to see how people live in big city. Okay, this has never been said, so this is not going to be answered. Now you have to choose between these three. So let's see, uh, let's try to find this group of words, okay? So my first approach, please, always go for the group of words that are in the questions, okay? So let us try to find sifted to the city word in the passage, okay? So where is it? It's not agricultural shuttle in the city, we're not working, uh-huh doing the same, uh, working, shifted to the city. Okay, so here is the word, okay? Here, uh, here is a group, shifted to the city, and let's find, why was Ram shifted to the city? And it says, Ram agreed and shifted to the city to join the same company where his cousins were working. Okay, so does it have uh, to join uh, where his cousins uh, were working? Okay, so it is the join, the company. So what company? That would be IT company. So the answer is option C. Okay, so if you do not go for a group of word, trust me, you're going to be mistaken. Okay, to make it a clearer, I also have brought one of the questions uh, that was asked in CMAT examination in the similar manner, okay? What is that that I'm trying to tell you? Uh, let me explain it further with this example. So this is 2016's question of CMAT from a reading comprehension. Okay, and it reads, a slip of tongue, the use of unusual words, or of an ambiguous word, and so on, may create an enemy where we had hoped to win a friend. Again, different classes of people use different vocabularies, and the ordinary speech of an educated may strike an unlocated listener as pompous. Pompous means pose, a soft person, you know. And it, the question was asked, the best way to win a friend. Now you have to look for this word, you know, winning a friend. Because irony in speech, yes, in order to win a friend, you have to avoid irony in speech. That's a general truth. But you are not going to with, go with general truth. You're going to go for a group of words that are in the questions, okay? And next one is pompous in his speech. Yes, since it uh, brings into uh, the term uh, pompous, some students might mark this answer. Okay, so please do not do in hurry because that would be wrong, okay? So first thing is winning a friend. Let's find this word in the passage. So where is it? It is here, to win a friend. 
Okay? And to win a friend, what should one do? A slip of tongue, the use of ordinary words, or an ambiguous friend. Okay? Ambiguous word and so on may create an enemy where you had hope to win a friend. So winning a friend is straight in line with this phrase in the passage. Okay? So we're not going to get diverted beyond this phrase. Okay? So what your answer should be is ambiguity in speech. Because all of these three may make sense in the general term, okay? But you are not going to take semantic as the regular or certain general exams, okay? You have to be specific. So you're going to find a group of words. That is my first way, okay, that is my first advice to all of the semantic appearing candidates. Uh, okay. Number two. And number two says, why was Ram not interested in agriculture and farming? Okay, let's see what the first uh, option say. He thought he, that he could not fulfill his dreams by opting for agriculture. Okay, more or less this makes sense, okay? This makes sense, uh, certainly. So we'll keep that. Okay, so uh, we'll keep this. He did not like to spend time in the fields. This was never said in the past, so you are going to cross it, okay? He had no knowledge of agriculture. It could be the reason, but we're not going with the possibility. So whatever is mentioned there, you will do that. So it has never been said in the passes. The D, he always wanted to work in an IT company. Okay, we have two here. Now, if we take a look at the passes, it says that he, it was not he who wanted to work in an IT company. Okay, he just wanted to go to the city because he had a big dream. And uh, to make it easier for him, so he, it was his brothers, his cousins, who wanted him to work in the IT company. Okay, uh, just let's have it. Let's let's take a look at the text. Okay, so it says Gopal asked him to join the IT company. So it was Gopal, his cousin brother, who asked him to join the IT company so that he gets to earn some money for which I can sustain his life in the city. So it was Gopal who asked him. So it was not his desire to work in the IT company. So uh, then which one should we go for then? Okay, then let's go with, we'll go with the one that says he thought that he could not fulfill his dream by staying in the city because he had a big goal and this is the correct answer. He thought he could not fulfill his dream by opting for agriculture. So this is the correct answer for now. And that's we, how we omitted these three. Next one, who were Gopal and Hari? It's really simple. Gopal and Hari are his, our Ramses, cousins. Okay, because the friend would be Krishna. Number four, what Krishna asks Ram? Krishna asks, so what does the passage say that Krishna asks to him? There's a, a direct speech where Krishna has asked something and he has asked if he had enough money. Okay, so this is the answer, so we're not going with this one. And lastly, what Krishna suggested to Ram? So Krishna suggested that since he had lots of money, Krishna wanted him to start up his own business. So we're going with this. Go back to the village was never said. Find a suitable girl and get married. And that would be my friend, you know. Okay. So none of the above is not it. So that's a as simple as that. Okay. So what is the thing that you must keep in your mind while approaching the reading comprehension you map? It is that you are going to find a group of words, okay? Whatever a phrase is asked in a question, that bottom line, that major phrase, you're going to choose that. You're going to find those, uh, find those phrases in the passage. And when they are in line, right? When they're in line, you are going to go with that answer. Okay, so as well as that. So this is how you secure five out of five in reading comprehension. All right, so there's more to come. Now let us not delay, let's move on to uh, the other questions. Okay, uh, uh, this is question number two. That will be question number two. Okay, that will be question number two. And direction in the following questions, there will be a sentence with missing words, and you're required to complete the sentence with the appropriate word or phrase out of the given options. Okay. So, this is from the fill in the blanks that I discussed, that I discussed earlier, that the last topic of CMAT will be fill in the blanks, where there will be questions from homophones or some grammar related questions. Okay, so this is where we do it. So, uh, okay, so Ram dashed to us for half an hour. Ram said to us for half an hour. Does it sound right to you? <laughs> it doesn't sound right at all, so we're just omitting that, okay? Ram, I uh, speak, Ram talked, Ram told, okay? Ram told to us for half an hour. No? Okay, we have two now. Uh, it's really simple actually because you speak, 
Ram is a singular subject, should take verb 5. So Ram is speak with Ram because you don't say he eat food, you know. You have to say he eats food. Ram go is never correct in English, the rule of tense. Ram goes, okay. So you speak, Bhavan is not compatible with a singular subject. So that would be Ram talked to us for half an hour. So that way the question was really simple, you know. Some of you might also be feeling that, oh, come on, we're not going to need you, okay? But trust me, for more than this, you're going to need me. Why, if you ask me? Yes, here's why. Okay, then you tell me, what is the difference between speak and talk? Or are they the same? No, dear ones, no, honey, no, sweetheart, they're not the same, okay? So, okay, here, let's bring it here. Speak. Speak is, might be one way. While addressing a parliament, the president spoke, okay? Uh, at a university, while as a guest, the Minister of Education spoke on the importance of this education, okay? So, speak can be one way. So, here, Ram, us, okay? You see the word Ram and us. So, Ram to us for half an hour means, could that be just a one-way conversation when us is involved? That Ram is not addressing a parliament or any stage or any platform. So, speak is one way, whereas, Talk. Talk is a conversation. Okay? Since we are also involved here, and for half an hour, Ram was not giving a speech, but rather having a conversation with us. So this is the difference between speak and talk. So speak is one-way communication, where talk, whereas talk is our two ways communication. So you talk with your friends, it means that your friend is also having conversation, and that's two ways. But if I tell you, I spoke on the importance of education, that is one-way conversation, or one-way speech that I'm making. Okay, and now it makes sense because uh, I had to bring this into uh, bring this into light because in the examination, had this question come and had instead of uh, speak, had there been a spoke, now many might have got confused back then. Okay, so you spoke and talk, you would still use this because there's us, the conversation involved. So this is the answer. Okay, I hope you understood me. So today you understand the difference between speak and talk. Okay, so uh, let's see what question number seven reads. And the question number seven reads that the Red Cross Society gave DAS aid to individuals. Okay, DAS aid. So what sort of aid could the Red Cross Society probably offer? So the first one here is financial aid. Wait a minute, you know, financial aid. Red Cross is a social organization and social organizations do not offer financial aid. It's up to donor uh, agencies, World Bank, is in development bank, okay? Such so donor agencies donate the finan donate financially, but the Red Cross Society aimed at providing service. Don't do that. So the next one we have here is monetary aid. Okay, it makes sense more or less. The financial also makes sense. Monetary also makes sense. What do we have here? Philanthropic. Oh, it makes more sense. Okay, but the fiscal, it does not make sense at all. Okay, so you're not definitely not going with the fiscal one. Okay, let's see what uh, types of word collocates with these sort of words. So monetary word does not go with aid, rather it goes well with monetary value, monetary system, or monetary gain. Okay, students of economics, accountancy, you probably know this, don't you? Okay, and the next one here is the word that goes with aid, financial aid, firms, financial institutions, and financial assistance. Okay, and what we have more is social organization that provides service, okay, and philanthropy. So what we can understand from here is that the word monetary does not go collocate with the word aid, so does the word fiscal. So you got to choose from these two because it's either financial aid or it's uh, the philanthropic aid. And by philanthropic, I do believe you already know about this. In case you didn't know, philanthropic is... In Nepal, we call it parapakari, manchugu pakargarni, helping or serving mankind. So let us also understand first what the Red Cross Society is. Red Cross, come on, you know about Red Cross Society, one of uh, the most heard uh, or one of the most renowned organizations in the world that is aimed at providing service to mankind. So the word philanthropy, since it is related to service, so what the social organization provides is the social service. So you're not going with this in this context. So, since social organization provides service and philanthropy, we would want to go with philanthropic aid to individuals, and that is the correct answer, okay? I know some of you definitely must have thought it. 
If not, I believe I made you understand this. Okay, thank you so much. More. On to the next okay. question. Eight number question. I read, this must be death in mind. So this must be burn in mind, my God. Okay, it looks quite disastrous. We don't say that. Born makes no sense. Okay, there are two terms. So now, which one do you use? The word born has something to do with birth. Okay, so having something in mind would not do something with birth because uh, there are past participle, that is, bhav three of bear, bear, uh, bear is both, okay? It's born as well as B-O-R-N-E. You say, I was, born, uh, I was born on September 24, 1995. That's uh, getting being birth, you know? So birth uses B-O-R-N. Whereas those words that are not related to birth, other than birth, we use B-O-R-N, born. Okay, so please pay attention. What you have to know about is the bhav three of bear, bear, uh, bear, which are past participle, we have two verbs for that. So one born, another born, okay? The pronunciation is the same. But the difference is that this born is used when you're talking about birth. When you are talking about birth. But when you are talking about things that is being produced, the production, like in ideas, developing the ideas, that has nothing to do with birth, okay? Produce production. Although it might look similar, although it might sound uh, similar, but birth is biological, and producing something won't be biological. So while producing, you use this term. So answer is, this must be born in mind. Because we're not talking about biological birth here. Rather, we are talking about to produce certain things, to keep certain things, okay? So the correct answer is B, B-O-R-N-E, born. All right, you got me? Very good. Okay, the next one. Okay, the next one is, he showed das during the fire. What did he show, okay? Uh, he showed daring during fire. Students, so uh, so something, okay? And something in answer to anything is a noun. Okay, so we need a noun here. And daring is an adjective. So you can't say, he so beautiful. She showed beautiful. Would that be correct? She showed beauty. She showed determination. So we need a verb here, okay? And First word, daring, cannot be the answer because it is an adjective. An adjective would not sound right here. He sort daring during the fire does not sound right at all because that's an adjective. Okay, all of these three, courage, boldness, audacity, these are nouns. Which one to use uh, between these courage, between uh, courage, boldness, and audacity? So boldness, he sort boldness during the fire. So boldness. Although all of these three means some kind of uh, guts, some kind of energy, you know, that positive determination. But boldness is not compatible with the word so. You don't say, she showed boldness, you know. You don't say that. Because that's not right. She won't use that. So let's see what the internet has to say. The internet says that the word audacity is more compatible with the word have. For example, she has audacity. Okay, he has audacity. And also, audacity may sometimes mean negative. Negative in a sense that audacity is a bravery, but sometimes it is an unnecessary bravery. Okay, or sometimes indiscipline. It has something to do with indiscipline, like challenging the authority, talking bad with your mom, are not bravery, not courage. They're opposite of that, actually. Courage in a bad way, okay? So that would be audacity. And it is more compatible with hap. Uh, here, uh, I have collected something from the internet. Okay, the internet has it. John had the audacity. So the word audacity is more compatible with the term had, which isn't here, right? So if it had, he showed dash during fire, we'd have written audacity because had is more compatible with audacity. Whereas the next term, okay, whereas the next term, so is more compatible. That is why with the only remaining, that is curries. So that would be our correct answer. Okay, but had there been had, we'd write audacity. So he showed courage during the fire. And that's the correct answer. Okay, you got me? Yes, very good. Okay, so uh, what do we have next here? All right, Samir has an dashing trip. Okay, you can never have that. Advantage trip. Oh, advantage is a noun here. We were needing an adjective, so Samir has an advantageous trip 
would more or less make sense, although it does not make much sense, but uh, with the sound compatibility, there should have been at least advantageous trip, okay? Advantageous trip is not right. So we have two now. Now, if you knew the meaning, I guess you'd have just done it, but no trouble. You have heard about trip, haven't you? Trips, how can trips be actually? Trips can be adventurous, okay? So acrimonious, what's the meaning of acrimonious? Acrimonious is bitter. Okay, not good, bitter. Bitter in speech and all. People who are quite bitter in speech, you know, or quite, um, quite rude while speaking, those people can be called to have an acrimonious kind of quality. For example, uh, acrimonious way of presenting. His acrimony means his presentation while speaking. So it has to do with something with speech, you know. So it has nothing to do with the trip. So yes, like you had guessed, the correct answer is adventurous because you have adventurous trip. Okay? So here, if you have heard this, no, no, no. I don't even have to tell if you have heard this because everyone has heard this, you know. Adventurous trip. Okay? So that's his correct answer. So on to our next question number three. And it says direction, choose the appropriate synonyms from the following. So what we need is synonym. Okay, so distinction. Come on, you've heard the word, right? Distinct. Distinct thing is a unique thing, is a unlike thing, is not a common thing. If I say this is a distinct idea, Nepali word prithak, it is translated as prithak, which means quite a unique thing. So what is synonym to unique here? Degree is not a synonym to unique. Disagreement has nothing to do with it. Not, nothing to do with something that is uncommon. Diffusion is spreading, you know, spreading something. And different, okay, here we have different. Different is more or less synonym to unique. Something uncommon, something that's not common. So that is its answer. And on to next, what does uh, next tell? And question number 12 uh, asks for a synonym among these words. So masterly, and you know what a master is, don't you? Right? Master is a person who has lots of skills and can teach or guide other people. Right? Okay. So, cruel. Okay, so masters are cruel. So you might use it as pseudonym, but that would be wrong. Okay? You can't do that. Next one is meaningful. Okay? It has nothing to do with meaning. Masterly has something to do with, because master, when you say he's a master, he has lots of skills, lots of talent, lots of things to offer his disciples. Okay? So, yes, you have to get to choose between these two. And crafty, crafty is a skillful person, but who uses his skills in harming other people or in doing something bad to other people? Okay, now here I have uh, two pictures. You see here? Okay, master or a skillful person uses it for a good cause, you know, to help other people out, to help people in need. Okay, so I've used a character from anime called Naruto, and this man here is quite that sort of man, okay? He helps other people out. Whereas crafty is a cunning. Nepali word chandal one. So chatur and chatur. Chatur and chandal are different. Chatur, clever, which translates to clever, uses his cleverity or cleverness to help other people out. But chandal uses his cleverity to harm other people. Just like this guy here, Orochimaru. He was the enemy? Okay, in case you haven't, give it a try. Okay, this guy here, okay, is quite crafty, quite cunning. Okay, he uses his skills to harm other people. So master was never meant to harm other people. Okay, so which one would we choose? We would choose skillful. Okay, so your masterly means you are skillful. Okay, so that's his answer. All right, that's how we do it. Okay, you like the pictures? I hope you did. Okay, and I also do watch this enemy. Okay, yes, here are some synonyms. Uh, as you see here, skillful, adept, deft, adroit are some positive terms, whereas crafty is decide, deceitfully clever, you know? Clever, but in a deceitful manner, your synonyms can be cunning, devious, or guileful, or using clever to harm other people. Okay, next one is unite. Okay, it's an easy word. So unite, unfold is the opposite of unite, you know? Unite is assemble things down, whereas unfold is uh, rolling it out and disassembling the things. So unfold is this antonym. And here we don't need antonyms, we need a synonym. Unchain, okay, there's a chain of something. Okay, your bicycle chain. And when you unchain it, you break it. You break the unity, you disassemble it. Okay, and unhinge, come on, you know what hinges are, do you? The lock in the door, okay. Uh, it is a tool that is used to harness the door to its frame. So when you unhinge it, you open that. You 
do something that is opposite of unity. Okay, you break that, you destroy that. So it, it is also antonym. So the only synonym here is combine because unite is to combine. Okay, unite the notes means to combine the notes. Okay, so on to number next. It's quite easy, don't you think? The question is comparatively easier. Okay, the next word is combat. Okay, combat. So those sports people who are into martial arts may know about this, more or less, okay? So, uh, quarrel, conflict and feud. You know, there's something in common between uh, conflict, quarrel and feud, because all of these three mean an idea that you develop in your mind. Okay, some tension, but not the physical fight. If I have conflict with you, if I have conflict with you, it is not that I'm engaging in a physical fight with you. It is that we have difference in opinion. So conflict is difference in opinion, not actually throwing hands, not actually being physical. Okay, so it's quarrel. Quarrel is just oral or verbal. A verbal fight is known as quarrel. And next word is feud. Okay, feud will also mean the same. It means to have some tension, to have some strong disliking between each other. That would be feared. And the only difference here is fight, which is physical. Okay? So you've heard about combat sports, haven't you? Combat sports include martial arts, taekwondo, and all of this, where you have to fight physically. Okay? So the only odd one that you see among uh, these four is fight. So what are you doing? Your correct answer is the one that is going to be the odd one. Okay? Because all of these three have something in common, and all of them three cannot be the answer. Come on, you know that, right? So that is his answer. The answer is fight. Okay, so 2022 offered us easy questions, if, I, if you ask me. If you take a look at the other questions, they're comparatively tough. But still, you'll use IQ here, okay? So it demands more intelligence. It means more or less it's the same. Okay, and on to uh, number next. That's a, that it would, should be the last question from synonyms. Okay, uh, refectory. Are your students interested in hotel management or uh, are your students We've completed their plus two from hotel management. You might know it more or less, because there is a word called suite that has also been asked in CMAT examination, okay? Suite, okay, it's not pronounced as suit. It is a set of room. Students of hotel management might know it, okay? In the similar manner, refectory, okay? So hotel management students, you have upper hand here. I agree, I agree with that. So restaurant, uh, it has nothing to do with the restaurant. So what happens to students is, whenever there are some words, certain words, that are uh, unnecessarily or that are unusually lengthier. So, uh, you see here, here are two words being used. So the examiner or the typist does, does not just type uh, the lengthier word, lengthy words because they are interested in doing that. Okay? They put lengthy words for some reasons. Okay? So you can also use your IQ in that way. All right? So restaurant and parlor, uh, which are uh, the words that are quite common that you have heard, because refectory is a word that we don't hear much. Okay, so you might also use your IQ in similar manner. And the other thing, the first one that I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the typist just, or the examiner sets some lengthy word, not because he or she is interested to type it, or just create a lengthy word, because lengthy word typing is a pain, you know that. We'd love to use a word that are quite easy, or that are more concise. So if he has, he or she has used it, then there should be a reason, and the reason is that one of these two is the correct answer. Okay? So the living room is more or less also known as parlor, Kota, right, that we call in Nepali. So that would be a mess. You know what mess is, right? Mess is a anekartis of the homonym. One of the mess is Bhadragol, Avastha is a mess. Another mess is the place where you dine. So that would be dining room. The correct answer would be dining room. Okay, so this is how we come to the end of synonyms. We use some brains, we use some kind of IQs, and sometimes, if needed, we also use some luck here. Okay? All right, so that is how we solve it. Okay, on to number next. Okay, now on to the most interesting segment of uh, this feedback session with not very much interesting person, as you might say. Okay? All right, fine with that. So, uh, yes, idioms and phrases, okay? Um, this might be quite new for us. New in a sense that this was not taught in the academy. You might have used it or heard more or less uh, when natives do hear it. And that is either by meeting them personally or in some movies, okay? So firstly, idioms and proverbs, or it is idioms or phrases, the same thing. That would be ukhan and tukai in Nepali, okay? So the first thing you should understand is what are idioms actually. So idioms are nothing of uh, the literal term. That would not be literal because, uh, let me show you with uh, this example here. A lion may have both the meanings. 
one literal, another metaphorical. And the literal meaning of lion would be that big animal, often referred to as the king of jungle, right? The big animal, the big tiger, big cat there will come and hunt you. And another lion would be a courageous human being. If I tell you uh, she is a lioness, would that mean that she, am I a friend, that I'm a friend with a lion? You know lion is not a friendly creature, right? I can't be afraid of lion. It means that I'm meaning it symbolically or metaphorically. It means that this girl that I'm talking about is as courageous as lion. Okay, so as a grown up, as a person who has now grown up, right, as a high school graduate, soon to be high school graduate, you should understand that a word may have two sort of meanings. One literal meaning, the other is metaphorical. So idioms are all metaphors, you know. If you just take things literally, you may be wrong, okay? Much like this one, to smell a rat, okay? So what does rat mean literally? Rat literally means that small creature that causes much of a trouble to human being, right? Because why, why is it creates much trouble? Because it steals away your food, right? It cuts your dress you have set for your date. It did many times of mine, you know, so I had to <laughs> go to the tent with some torn clothes and all. So rat is often known for his mischievous nature, for creating some trouble, okay? So when you smell a rat, what could that mean? Smell is the presumption, you know, smell means the sensation that you have some trouble, okay? So to smell a rat would never mean, would never mean this, okay, that you're smelling a rat. Please do not take it literally, because idioms are not to be taken literally. They're a metaphor. So what could that mean then? Okay, so to smell a rat means you are suspecting that a trouble is on the way. Or you've suspected that there is some kind of fishy stuff going around you. To smell a rat. Okay, so uh, what would that be? A food that tastes bad. Come on, you cannot relate rat and food. Okay, that would be unrelatable. So whether to be in a bad mood, to get depressed now, so that would be to suspect fall dealings. Something wrong is going on. Something, trouble is on the way. Or trouble is being progressing, okay? That would be its meaning, okay? So, dal ne hai, to smell a rat. Have you ever smelled a rat? Think about it. Okay, so, I hope my teaching has not been creating you that you're smelling some sort of rat, okay? <laughs> Please trust me on that. <laughs> Good. Okay, next one. Black sheep, okay, okay, this is quite interesting because this is something all of us are troubled with, you know, because all of us, there is one member in our family who is all shed to ruin that long and hard on prestige and reputation. You know, personally speaking, I had a maternal uncle, the eldest, uh, no, the second eldest, whenever he was around, uh, <laughs> he brought family dignity to where, you know? to the sewage, you know, actually, to the sewer, because he was such a kind of man, okay? Anyway, okay, he's my um, maternal uncle still, right? So, black sheep does not mean literally. Please do not take black sheep as this here, because there's no such black sheep. It doesn't exist. So what could black sheep mean then? Okay, let's have a look. An ugly person, and you know, the world has stopped being judgmental. And anything black is ugly, that concept is bad concept. Okay, that's too old. Okay, all right, just look at me, I'm not totally white, but <laughs> do I not look good? <laughs> I look totally fine, I know that. Okay, you have any problem with that? You don't have any problem, do you? Yes. So a black sheep does not mean an ugly person, or okay, one who takes no share in the profit, it makes no sense because sheep and profit, how can you relate sheep and profit? Okay, there's no sense it creates. So here are two remaining. An unlucky person, someone who is a disgrace to the rest of the group, okay? So unlucky person and someone who is a disgrace. Okay, you, you might have to choose one between. Now, it's all up to Uncle Luck, you know? So even if you just throw a stone at the dark, you never know. Sometimes when hit it right. But I'm not here to uh, promote that idea that you should uh, depend on your luck. I'm here to guide you. And the black sheep would mean not this, but this. Hold on. Is that our former crown prince, Prince? Eric, you'll make me lose my job, okay? Don't do that. <laughs> sorry, sorry for that, okay? That's our former crown prince, who is more or less 
A disgrace to uh, the Saha family? Uh, okay, let me not fall in controversy. So anyway, so Blackwell is one who is disgraced to the rest of the family. Okay, and I did not put our crown pins here, okay? There was some my technician who probably did that. Eric, that must be you, because Eric has bad blood with me. Okay, all right, so Black Sea is somebody who brings down family's reputation. Okay, two man see, Zoli see, Parivar ko, puri bezad convince her. That's Black Sea, all right? Okay, so on to the next. Okay, the next one would be a man of straw. Okay, now a man of straw would be, who would the man of straw be? That would be not a man who gives value to everyone. That would not be it. A man who believes only in luck. No, straw and luck, you can't relate. A man who does not believe in God. Straw and believing, you know. I guess there's nothing in common. So yes, a man of no substance or weak character is a man of straw. Because straw is often identified as a very weak object. You know, straw, paral, right? It's quite weak. You know, you can't, it's not that strong. So weak character and man of no substance. No substance in the sense that you don't give much value to a straw, you know. It's not as valuable, so this would totally make sense. 19, to hit the nail right on the head. Hitting the nail on the head, it's like head shot, okay? To insult someone, hitting the nail on the head is not insulting someone, that would be more like killing someone, you know, which isn't here, so it makes no sense here. To do or say the right thing, teach someone a lesson. So when you hit, a nail on someone's head, that's not teasing lesson, that's more than teasing a lesson, you know, because that person will die eventually. So <laughs> you can't do that. To hurt someone badly, okay, so hitting the nail, okay, and first thing, let's not forget that they are idioms, and if you have been taking things literally, you're doing it wrong, okay, you are uh, taking a wrong path. Because everything here, uh, like uh, uh, teaching, hurting, that's insulting, are somewhat of a literal sense, you know? So you can't do that. So that would be more like to do or say the right thing, okay? Exactly to the point, not beating about the bush. So you either beat about the bush, you digress from the point, or you come to the point and you say exactly the right thing that was needed. So that is to hit the nail right on the head. It's just like the head shot in the military game, okay? And next one, one sets his or her, his or her face against. Face against, you know. So if I'm facing towards you, it means I have some kind of approval. I, can, I, I kind of have some sort of agreement with you. But if I turn my face against you, it means that I'm not happy with you. Okay? So the preposition here makes sense, actually. Because when I turn my face against you, it means I have a strong disliking towards you. So what could that mean? To fight over PT. Is your fighting and facing against? No, no, no. To fight the enemy bravely, no. Because putting your face against does not mean that you're engaged in physical fight. It is some kind of, uh, some kind of a conflict that is in your heart, okay? So that would be more uh, sensible than this. So det uh, determine to accomplish the task, that is resist with determination. Resist means you don't like somebody, actually, okay? You avoid that person, there's denial, and with a strong determination. So if your parents are facing uh, are setting his, uh, their faces against you, it means they are not in approval or they are not agreeing to some of your proposal. Okay, so that is what it would be. And we're almost, no, 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 we have end. We come to the end of this idioms and phrases. On to the last one and the preposition, okay? In the following prepositions, best verbal ability questions, there is a sentence with the missing preposition. You are required to select the correct preposition out of the given options. Okay, so prepositions. He always stops at car at this stop dash 5.30 p.m. That is 5.30 p.m. What is 5.30 p.m.? Come on, you know it is time by a watch or time by a clock. And for time by a watch, time by a clock, for speed, for festivals, we have a very special preposition that is at. So he always stops at this stop at 5.30 p.m. Okay, something we studied in grade six. La. Next one. And Mira is going to attend a party at the clubhouse. Okay, seemingly uh, to a larger place we use at in English. For example, at the airport, at, uh, at the restaurant, at the museum, at the police station. But the clubhouse comes into more of some exception. It is some kind of phrasal, you know? That is what English people have been using. So you're going with this one, okay? Mira is going to attend a party in the clubhouse, okay? 
All right, that's how you do it. Okay, so next one. What does the next one suggest? We have seen snowfalls for two weeks, that's the winter, okay? Winter is a season. Okay, and for a season, for season, for uh, only month in September, in October, for only month, okay? If month and date are there, this combo uses on, on September 23, but only in September, okay? It rains in September, it rains in June, only month. Similarly, for duration in two weeks, in three weeks, right? In a similar manner for uh, daybreak, in the morning, in the evening, we use preposition in. So that is why we have seen snowfalls for two weeks in the winter. Okay, for season, there's a rule in English, you use in, in the winter. Next one, he was currently staying at Das Hotel. Okay, this is quite interesting, you know, because uh, both of them are used, you know, in, the, in a hotel and at a hotel are both in use. And the internet and the source speaks that out of these two, one is more popular. Okay, so we're going with the one that's more popular. So let's see what's more popular or what internet has to say. So it is uh, derived from uh, the Tix Ranch uh, called website on the internet. And not all just this, even lots of other websites say that. So uh, in a hotel is widely used, much like you see here. So there are uh, more users going with in a hotel, you know. It, the number is just, like you see here, it's 316,000, uh, it's 615,000 people going with in a hotel, right? So it has the majority. The number of in a hotel used is just, it's twice the number of at a hotel. So we're going with the one that's more popular, that's more common, and so we're going with in a hotel, you know. In, a, in the clubhouse, in a hotel. We're going with this, we're going with the one that's more popular. And lastly, okay, and this is the last one, and I hope it brings more or less the smile in your face, because this feedback is about the end, and there are 25 questions asked there, okay? So the last question says, this blazer comes, there's three different size. Okay, so this blazer comes, there's three different size, of three different sizes, you know, sound right? With more or less sounds fair, you know? At three different sizes, does not make sense at all. In three different sizes, okay? Okay, these two make sense. In case you know it already, uh, in is the correct answer, but in case you did not know, this blazer comes with three different sizes, in three different sizes. Come on, you've heard this, this is quite a popular one, you know? In case you haven't, now what do you do, you know? You leave it to mother luck, okay? But then still, I use the one that's more popular because English is quite a melodious language because if uh, it does not sound right, there is lots of possibility that you are speaking it wrong or you are grammatically incorrect, okay? It could be that English was made by a magician because that is why uh, the private school students, they are really bad, they're really poor in English because we go with music, you know? We consider English as just as another musical subject and we should be tuned, for example, uh, it's see in there, it's see there, <laughs> there sounds better, you know, because we're all musicians, we love music, so it's see there, that's correct. Okay, so we're going with music, and if we go with music, with three different sizes, in three different sizes, sounds a lot better. And not just uh, only did it sound right, but it turned out to be the correct answer. Okay, so this is where our feedback session ends. Although this is an end for me, for you, this is the beginning of the journey. So we'll go through this feedback session, watch as many times as needed. And if you have any further queries, you have the email of our Nathan, you email there. If you need any more further inquiry about this, we have you available all the time, okay? Okay, so a big shout out to Nathan for uh, having me here, for uh, giving this me this golden opportunity to be of help to the CMAT preparing students. I hope I was of help and in case you need more, like I said already, stay tuned to Nathan. Okay? And here's me. Again, thank you so much for joining. And see you all. Namaste. Have a good luck.